AB Calculus Maximum Minimum and Inflection Point Problem with the Graphing Calculator. In this lesson, we're going to work out an AB Calculus test problem that allows the use of a graphing calculator. And this is the problem. Find the relative maximum and minimum points and inflection points on the graph of y equals x to the fourth power minus 8x cubed plus 18x squared minus 16x. Justify your answers. And this problem is from the portion of the test that allows the use of the graphing calculator and in this lesson we'll use the TI Inspire graphing calculator. An average Algebra 2 student with a graphing calculator could quite easily enter this function as shown here on a graph page on a TI Inspire graphing calculator. To get this view, you can enter the function then press menu, trace, then graph trace. And by tracing with the cursor to the right, we come up with the only place on the graph that looks like a relative or absolute maximum or minimum, and it's this point shown at 4, negative 32, and it should be obvious here that it's a minimum. The good news is that using the graphing calculator, this answer is quite easy to find. The bad news? This answer alone might give you only one point out of perhaps nine possible points, definitely not something that will help you pass your AP exam. And why might you get only one point? You didn't give any answer about an inflection point, or, or, and if you look at the curve while it's being traced, you will realize that there should be two inflection points. Also, the answer alone gives no justification for the answer. And if you say that you traced the graph and it gave you the minimum point, that won't help. You need to answer in the language of calculus. This brings me to an important point. In calculator problems on an AP exam, you can do most of them without a calculator. But the calculator will help you save time, and if used properly, check for errors in computations that can be tedious. The calculator does not help you if you don't know the calculus to get the answer, and the language of calculus in giving your answer. And at the end of the lesson, after showing the solution using calculator, I will show you how I solved this problem without a calculator. To find our minimums and maximums on the way to finding the inflection points, we need to find the first derivative of our original function. And using the power rule of calculus, we have y prime is equal to 4x cubed minus 24x squared plus 36x minus 16. And using the calculator, we enter the first derivative into the calculator. And based on the graph of the first derivative, we can answer that there is a relative minimum at 4 because the first derivative or slope goes from negative to positive at x equals 4. We'll find the output value for the input of 4 later when we evaluate the points. Next we use the power rule again to get the second derivative and this is our way to finding the inflection points. And the second derivative is y double prime equals 12x squared minus 48x plus 36. And here's the function for the second derivative graphed in the calculator. We can find the inflection points where the value of the second derivative changes signs, and based on this graph, the second derivative changes signs at x equals 1 and at x equals 3. So we see that there are inflection points at x equals 1 and at x equals 3, and we write the coordinates with the output values blank. Now we'll go back and graph the original quartic function y equals x to the fourth minus 8x cubed plus 18x squared minus 16x. Then we can access the table view of the function by pressing control then t on our ti inspired graphing calculator. We see that our minimum is at the point 4 comma negative 32 and we have our inflection points at 1 comma negative 5 and at 3 comma negative 21 and we box in our answers as correct. We have the correct answers and the rationale in calculus language for why they are the correct answers. If you would like to stop here, that's great. I just wanted to show you how I worked this problem out without a calculator. So we'll just pretend that nothing has been done yet on the problem. We haven't solved it. I think it's a useful exercise to consider to prepare especially for that portion of the test that does not allow for a calculator. Without a calculator, the start is the same as with a calculator, and that is to take the derivative of the original function. Finding the derivative using the power rule of calculus, we have y prime equals 4x cubed minus 24x squared plus 36x minus 16. Now we need to find the critical points of the function by finding where the first derivative equals 0. So we have 
0 equals 4x cubed minus 24x squared plus 36x minus 14 minus 16. We have it over at the right. To solve this equation, we'll factor out a 4. So we have 0 equals 4 times quantity x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x minus 4. Then we divide both sides of the equation by 4 and we have 0 equals x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x minus 4. Now on to factoring. Factoring a cubic polynomial is not as easy as factoring a quadratic. Based on what I see here, I'm going to try to see if quantity x minus 4 is a factor of this cubic polynomial. And to do this, I'll set up a synthetic division bracket with 4 on the outside and the coefficients in their places. You might recall in synthetic division, we changed the signs of the binomial we're using as the dividend. So the minus 4 in x minus 4 becomes positive 4. It's setting x minus 4 equal to 0 and solving for x. We'll bring down the 1 in the x squared place. Next, we multiply 4 by 1, which equals 4, and bring it down under the negative 6 in the x's column. Next, we take the sum of negative 6 and 4, which is negative 2, and negative 2 is in the x's place. Now, we take 4 times negative 2 and place the product, negative 8, below the 9 in the numbers column. Now, we bring down the sum of 9 and negative 8, which is 1. Then we multiply 4 by 1 and place the product 4 here below the negative 4. Then we add negative 4 and 4 to get our remainder, which is 0. So with 0 as a remainder, we have as a quotient the trinomial x squared minus 2x plus 1. If it hadn't worked out to be a 0 remainder, we could have tried quantity x minus 1, x minus 2, or perhaps even x plus 4. So we bring down the equation with quantity x minus 4 factored out, and it's 0 equals quantity x minus 4 times quantity x squared minus 2x plus 1. Now we can factor out the x squared minus 2x plus 1, and that gives us 0 equals quantity x minus 4 times quantity x minus 1 times quantity x minus 1. And since our zeros, after solving for x, are 1 and 4, we can set up a number line as an organizing tool to help us check the signs of the first derivative on all sides of the critical numbers. So the number line is set up with our critical numbers 1 and 4 on it. First we'll check the left of the critical number 1, so we check for x equals 0, and we're just checking for the sign. And with x equals 0, we would have a negative times a negative times a negative, which would equal a negative. So we place a negative sign to the left of the 1 above the number line and an arrow pointing down below the number line. Then we try a number between the critical numbers, so we have a positive, this would be using 2. So we'd have a positive times a positive times a negative, which would equal a negative. And that's negative also, so we know the value of the first derivative between 1 and 4 is also negative. We place a negative sign on top and a down arrow below. And finally, trying a number to the right of 4, we'll try 5. We have a positive times a positive times a positive, which equals a positive. So we know that all numbers larger than 4 are positive. We place a positive sign to the right of 4. So we see that at 4, the first derivative of our slope switches from negative to positive, and we place an up arrow below the number line. So 4 is going to be the input value for a relative minimum. And just for your future reference, a double root like we had at 1 with that x minus 1 will not change signs as you go from the left to the right. So to find the point, we plug 4 into the original function and get 4 to the 4th minus 8 times 4 cubed plus 18 times 4 squared minus 16 times 4. And that gives us f of 4 equals 256 minus 512 plus 288 minus 64. And so f of 4 is negative 32. So our minimum point is at 4 comma negative 32. Next, we're going to clear the work we've done out except for the answer for the minimum point and find the second derivative using the power rule. And that would be y double prime equals 12x squared minus 48x plus 36. Next, we'll find the points of inflection by setting the second derivative equal to 0. So we have 0 equals 12x squared minus 48x plus 36. 
Next, we factor out a 12. So we have 0 equals 12 times quantity x squared minus 4x plus 3. Then to simplify, we divide by 12. So we have 0 equals x squared minus 4x plus 3. Then we factor the quadratic trinomial and come up with 0 equals quantity x minus 1 times quantity x minus 3. And solving for x, we get x equals 1 and x equals 3. If we were being asked for a concavity or something else, we might have to do another number line like we did to look at the minimum point, but we aren't being asked that. But we are being asked for the points of inflection, so we need to plug first the number 1 into the original function. And that, that gives us f of 1 equals 1 minus 8 plus 18 minus 16. So f of 1 is negative 5. So we know that one of our inflection points is 1 comma negative 5. Next, to find our second point of inflection, we find f of 3 by plugging in 3 for x. So this simplifies to f of 3 equals 81 minus 216 plus 162 minus 48. So we end up with f of 3 equals negative 21. So this gives us our second inflection point at 3 comma negative 21. So we'll box in all our answers as correct, and our justification is precisely the same as we had earlier using the calculator. We've covered some very useful techniques for solving minimum inflection point problems with and without a calculator. This has been AB Calculus Maximum, Minimum, and Inflection Point Problem with the Graphing Calculator. Thanks for viewing.